the 9:30 coffee break with George Knight on 88.9. Good morning. Sour Diesel. Diesel. Sativa. The bell. The ring of the bell. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. 7 1. Hmm? Why do you think this section about judgment, right? The first word in all caps Matthew or Maat. This means gift of God. Theo is like Theo, God. Gift of God. Ma'at is truth in Egypt. The goddess personified truth. Truth is female, wisdom female, Sophia in philosophy. It's a little warm now. So take the hat off. Judge not that ye not be judged, or as you hear in other places, it's judge not lest ye be judged, or judge not unless you be judged yourself. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, or the log? But considerest not the beam Excuse me, what, the splinter, the, the, uh, <laughs> the moat would be a splinter. And why beholdest that you, why do you behold the splinter in your brother's eye, but you don't consider the log or the beam that is in your own eye? Why are you judging the triviality, the trivial wrong of your, the splinter, the little wrong of your brother, but you're not... Con taking care and concerned about the giant problem you have. The wrong that you have committed. That's way bigger. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat, or the splinter, let me pull out the splinter out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own. A log. You hypocrite, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. And then verse 7. Ask, and it shall be, shall be given you. This is 7-7, seven, seven, Matthew 7-7, seven, seven, and Christ equals 77 in English gematria. C is 3, H is 8, R is 18, I is 9, S is 19, T is 20. Add those up, 77. And then chapter 7, verse 7 of Matthew. Ask, and it shall, shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock. and it shall be opened unto you. The door. Isidore, gift of Isis. Theodore, gift of God. Dorothy, have you seen John Carter from 2012? It's two hours and 12 minutes from 2012, Disney. And uh, Disneyland Enlightenment. Mars royalty. Uh projecting yourself, copying yourself, and sending yourself remotely with tech, knowledge One, so Ma Matthew 1, 7, why did they put the part about judgment at, excuse me, 7, chapter 7, verse 1, 7 and 1. 7 is September, Libra. Septem in Latin is 7. And Libra is at 9 o'clock of the setting sun of the feminine, of judgment, Libra. We'll go to any courthouse, it's the sign of Libra in the front. Blind justice, she's blinded 
and she's carrying, she has two scales balanced in her hands. Evenness, fairness, balance, equilibrium, equilibra, om, libra, even, eve, the feminine of the evening, of the sun going down, judgment down. Mary and Jesus and Aries and the other sign of the other equinox over here. This is where the sun rises every day at three o'clock. Libra, Aries, libraries. And this is one. Originally, March is number one. Mars, the first of the year. First, the Aries, the beginning when the sun hits the equatorial plane, back to the equator, or back around, after going down to the winter or the interment, the burial at the Tropic of Capricorn, of Caput, Caput, of Decap, of Death, December, December. Say it with a lisp, and the meaning becomes clear. The, de the lowest point of the sun's path. The sun is a traveler on a journey annually or anally in the Holy of Holies. Above and below, as above, so below. Holy, holy, holy. One to seven. Every day, east to west. Right ascension at three in the east, and then setting at the west at nine of the feminine. Three to nine, and six between of the base six of six to twelve. Vertical and horizontal of Horus on the horizon line rising and now it is May 6th today And the matrix is back streaming on Netflix And I'm gonna read to you from the undiscovered self by Carl Jung the first Carl Jung book that I read when I was about 19 18 or 19 living with my mom on Pine Street Pine of the Pineal Jung was in the background for much of my childhood because my parents tried to save their marriage by going to a Jungian analyst named Ken Larson. <clears throat> and interestingly, the movie theater I ended up working at at the age of 21 in San Diego was for my initiation into cinema of the mama, or when I saw The Matrix for the first time in 99, was called the Ken Cinema. I got called into the Matrix free, free three times in San Diego because that movie. I when I'd been uh, immersed in Jung and Terrence McKenna and all of that kind of stuff at that point, and when that movie was out, I saw that and couldn't believe it because it was all of it. May. So if, now I work at store 506. I'm going to show you a synchronicity with the 506 that was big yesterday at the store. It's St Trader Joe's 506. I was hired there in Swampscott on Paradise Road in 2004. Here we are in 2019. 15 years after. And uh, look at the beginning of The Matrix, the very first film, the opening, before it goes into the scene with Trinity and the cops in room 33 and the chase scene that ensues. Or 303 with Trinity and the matrix, T-R-I-X, the three X's, or the 24th letter of two plus four, three sixes, of a, the trilogy starring Trinity. It says the matrix cannot tell you who you are. The, the womb or the cave of Plato, because the matrix is the allegory of Plato's cave updated for the cyberpunk culture of the Taurus. The very first opening scene, the before it go, it goes into the zero between five and six, and five oh six is in takes up the whole screen for a second at the beginning of the film. I'm gonna link that to. Uh, I will link the opening scene in in the uh, WordPress present uh, WordPress post. I will do with this video later. So everything to do with judgment is has to do with seven, of the severing, of the September separation, of balance, of the two, on in the one between, which is the evening, equator, of the equinoxes, or the equal oxen, 
in the mid L. And in your body, this is the path from your pineal gland in your cerebram of Aries, the high ram of the brain tree at three o'clock to the waist at the west line below. It's the movement from a, from above to below. It's a, it's a downward, the down in the spine with the pine and the back up. Up and over. Jack in the green we are in now of spring into summer. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack and the beanstalk going up the beanstalk. Jacob's ladder, Jacob's ladder. Jack's from Jacob. It's just short, Jacob, Jack, short for Jacob. And all the associated names, John, James, Shane, Sean, Jean, Jane. On and on. It's and then Jack O' Lantern in the Autumn in Scorpio after the sun goes into his going into his Autumn of time, descending to December through the ember months of September, October, November, December, the fire going down. Jack O' Lantern in October of Scorpio of Judah, the kiss of death in Judas in the genitals of the Gentiles, of the agents of doom going down, of the serpent offering the fruit, poison fruit of the tree of knowledge, knowing the edge of the ledge. How would you ever know what it is to go up if you had never gone down? How would you know Jesus and Mary of pure virgin consciousness of Virgo above the belt here, above Libra, virgin Virgo of Virginia, of John Carter, John, and what's the, the name of Earth in that film is, begins with Ja, or Ya, or Yeah. Shua. This will be the end. I'll just do the whole, um, since they don't have the 15 minute limit on YouTube any longer. I can go up to even to half hour if I want to. If you look at a lot of the early videos I did, they there's kind of a rushed quality perhaps, or most of what I've done, it's kind of rushed, I guess. Partly because I just um, not interested in mincing words and wasting time. Even though, it, you see, the thing irony of what I just said is there's no time to waste. And there's no time like the present. There's, the only time is the present. The future, you know, this whole planning for the future and saving for tomorrow, you know, and always planning for the next coming up around the corner, next thing causes you to miss the, the now or miss the mark because the now corresponds to the bullseye. The now is the target and it corresponds to your pineal gland in between the two eyes and between the eyebrow and the, the brow behind here within secreting in secret the secretions of the sacred red of the blood of the blessings, the bullseye. Taurus right here where we are in the calendar year right now in the back of the brain the, the it's, There's a bulge here a bulge bull and it's like it's a bowl and it's a ball and It's connected to the high ram or the Lord of the lard the commander who sits above and steers or stores Tauruses the bull wheel of the year, of the calendar. Do you, do you see why I made this oval, this depiction of the clock positions corresponding to the, the zodiac signs, positions of the sun? I wasn't consciously thinking of it at the time, but it's because I wanted to be able to use this to show how it's, this path, this ecliptic circle of the year corresponds to your own head. The Undiscovered Self by Carl Jung. You think it's from 1958. You think that the um, self has been discovered. Think again. We're here in 2019. 
what he means by the self is not necessarily what you think he means or maybe not even close. Today is May the 6th, 5, 6, 11, the pair of L's of the parallels of Joaquin and Boaz, the sun and the moon, day and night of Adam and Eve, odd, even, dawn, evening, on, off, right, left, yang, yin, sun and moon, Saul and Mon, Solomon, Solomon's temples, not built by the hands of man, but built, or bold, just because you don't know and understand, stand under the bull, the invisible that created this bull and bulge of Taurus here in the cerebellum of Bel or Baal, the Lord of the Cabal, of Kabbalah, of the motor cortex that of the engine, of the origin, of the genius, of genesis, of the genetics, of the genes of the mother goddess Isis. Just because you don't stand under, understand that invisible creator doesn't mean it's not there, just because you don't see it. And just because you don't see what the <clears throat> schizoid one, dissociated one sees, doesn't mean that he or she isn't seeing it. Of course he or she's seeing it. It's just not there. And and look at the huge rise in dementia and you know psycho, psycho psychological mental problems and since since Jung wrote the Undiscovered Self, and just generally since post World War II and you know post twentieth century and the madness, whole society of shell shocked beings, whole world of them. First world, second world, third world, all shell-shocked or suffering PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, brought to you in part by the Vatican. Batteries not included. Price and participation may vary. We're the Catholic Universal Cathode of the Catheter, of Catherine, of Caffeine, of the Calf. Sixth, and the moon is black, but we had a new moon on the fourth. On Saturday... Saturn's day was the new moon, and today moon's day, the moon is now waxing on and will be full on the 18th, will be half on the 11th, May of Mama, Mary, everywhere around the world, and look at the march of Mars here before May, Ma and Ma. And in between April, which is from Aphrodite, Greek for Venus in Latin, and Hathor in Egyptian, and Ishtar in Babylonian, the cow goddess of joy. Cow jumped over the moon, hickory dickory dock. The cow horns of the crescent, of the letter C of crest, the crest of Christ, of the crystal clear truth, of the light of El, Aja. Aja, El, Elisha, Elsa, Elizabeth, God is an oath. May is Maya, is Latin, is goddess of fertility, of the Mother Earth, of Demeter, of the diameter, of all redemption. Of Isis, Astarte, Diana, Hecate, Demeter, Kali, Inanna. Oops. The Undiscovered Self by Carl Jung, which is available to read in PDF form online, which I'm going to do right now. If I can get the darn Dell to turn back on. There we go. Just a stone throw from England's third largest city. Keep walking southeast from here and you'll enter the heart of... Oh, couldn't recognize me, so I gotta do the... All right. So, the contents of, of The Undiscovered Self by Carl Jung. The uh, chapters, one through seven. There's seven chapters. 
And the first chapter is the plight of the individual in modern society. Second chapter is religion as the counterbalance to mass mindedness. And the third is the position of the West on the question of religion. Fourth chapter, the individual's understanding of himself. Ah, oh, it's not allowing me to scroll down now. The philosophical and the psychological approach to life, chapter 5, page 31. Chapter 6 is self-knowledge. Chapter 7 is the meaning of self-knowledge. So we're going to go to chapter 6, self-knowledge. Page 72. To this, remember, this is from 1958, Carl Jung, Swiss psychoanalyst who coined the term synchronicity, and I have nine cash register synchronicities of the nine rays to share with you after reading from this. Page 63. To this question, self-knowledge. Remember at the beginning of The Matrix, when... Uh, the first movie when, or in the middle of the film when Neo goes to the oracle, what does the oracle have in the kitchen above her doorway that she points out? Temet noski, which is Latin for know thyself. Self-knowledge. To this question, there is a positive answer only when the individual is willing to fulfill the demands of rigorous self-examination and self-knowledge. If he follows through his intention, he will not only discover some important truths about himself, but will also have gained a psychological advantage. He will have succeeded in deeming himself worthy of serious attention and sympathetic interest. He will, set his, he will have set his hand, as it were, to a declaration of his own human dignity and taken the first step towards the foundations of his consciousness, that is, towards the, un towards the unconscious. Foundation of the conscious mind is the unconscious mind. The only accessible source of religious experience. The unconscious, the only accessible source of religious experience. This is certainly not to say that what we call the unconscious is identical with God or is set up in his place. It is the medium from which the religious experience seems to flow. As to what the further cause of such an experience may be, the answer to this lies beyond the range of human knowledge. Knowledge of God is a transcendental problem. The religious person enjoys a great advantage when it comes to answering the crucial question that hangs over, that hangs over time like a threat. He has a clear idea of the way his subjective existence is grounded in his relation to God. I put the word God in quotes in order to indicate that we are dealing with an anthropomorphic idea whose dynamism and symbolism are filtered through the medium of the unconscious psyche. Anyone who wants to can at least draw near to the source of such experiences, no matter whether he believes in God or not. Without this approach, it is only in rare cases that we witness those miraculous conversions of which Paul's Damascus experience is the prototype. That religious experiences exist no longer needs proof, but it will always remain doubtful whether what metaphysics and theology call God and the gods is the real ground of those experiences. The question is idle, actually, and answers itself by reason of the subjectively overwhelming numinosity of the experience. By numinosity, he means spirituality. And he's saying that the question of whether the religious experiences are actually God or not, as claimed by metaphysicians and theologians, 
whether or not that's the real God and whether the unconscious is actually producing them, that question is idle because of the fact that these experiences are so subjectively overwhelming in their spiritual con content, their intensity. To the, the experiencer, subjectively. There's an objectivity in the subjectivity. Everyone experiences their subjectivity. Everyone's alone within, all one. Consider it. Thank God I encountered this book, little pocket book. I mean, <laughs> little um, paperback pocket edition that I found that you can just like put in your back pocket, like the constitutions I've been showing you, the copies of the constitutions. Little squirrel playing over there. And uh, thank God I encountered that in my mom's collection back in the late 90s or mid 90s, before the end of the 90s. After I got out of high school, or after I got out of prison, I mean high school. That's when I really started getting intellectually curious. I'll never forget the report card I got from, oh, what was her name? The honors level English class, Miss, Mrs. it was a French name. She said to me, does not, she wrote on my report, does not show intellectual curiosity. It's because I was pissed off, okay? And I was fucked up. Shell-shocked. Or PTSD. Traumatized. Traumatized. Everyone gets traumatized growing up. Anyone who has had who has had it, the religious experience, is seized by it and therefore not in a position to indulge in fruitless metaphysical or epistemological speculations. He doesn't have time to ask whether it's real or not because it's experienced as, as such so intense and immediate. Absolute certainty brings its own evidence and has no need of anthropomorphic proofs. In view of the general ignorance of and bias against psychology, it must be accounted a misfortune that the one experience which makes sense of individual existence should seem to have its origin in a medium that is certain to catch everybody's prejudices. Once more the doubt is heard. Quote, what good can come out of Nazareth? The unconscious, if not regarded outright as a sort of refuse bin underneath the conscious mind, is at any rate supposed to be of, quote, merely animal nature. In reality, however, and by definition, it is of uncertain extent and constitution, the unconscious. It's of, uh, by definition, is of uncertain extent and constitution, so that the overvaluation or undervaluation of it is groundless and can be dismissed as... Oh, come on, let me turn the page here. <laughs> it's not letting me turn the page. Oh, there we go, now I turn two. <laughs> okay, as mere prejudice. At all events, such judgments sound very queer in the mouths of Christians, whose Lord was himself born on the straw of a stable among the domestic animals. It would, have, it would have been more to the taste of the multitude if he had got himself born in a temple. In the same way, the worldly-minded mass man looks for the numinous or spiritual experience in the mass meeting which provides an infinitely more imposing background than the individual soul. Even church Christians share this pernicious delusion. Psychology's insistence on the importance of unconscious processes for religious experience is extremely unpopular, no less with the political right than with the political left. For the former, the deciding factor... For the former or the right, the deciding factor is the historical revelation that came to man from outside. To the latter, 
the left. This is sheer nonsense, and man has no religious function at all except belief in the party doctrine. When suddenly the most intense faith is called for. <laughs> On top of this, the various creeds assert quite different things, and each of them claims to possess the absolute truth. Yet today, we live in a unitary world where distances are reckoned by hours and no longer by weeks and months. Exotic races have ceased to be peep shows in ethnological museums. They have become our neighbors. And what was yesterday the prerogative of the ethnologist is today a political, social, and psychological problem. Already the ideological spheres begin to touch, to inter interpenetrate, and the time may, be, may not be so far off when the question of mutual understanding in this field will become acute. To make oneself understood is certainly impossible without far-reaching comprehension of the other's standpoint. The insight needed for this will have repercussions on both sides. History will un undoubtedly pass over those who feel it is their vocation to resist this inevitable development, however desirable and psychologically necessary it may be to cling to what is essential and good in our own tradition. Despite all the differences, the unity of mankind will assert itself irresistibly. On this card, Marxist doctrine has staked its life, while the West hopes to get by with technology and economic aid. Communism has not overlooked the, en the enormous importance of the ideological element and the universality of basic principles. The nations of the Far East share our ideological weakness and are just as vulnerable as we are. The underestimation of the psychological factor is likely to take a bitter revenge. It is therefore high time we caught up with ourselves in this matter. For the present, this must remain a pious wish, because self-knowledge, as well as being highly unpopular, seems to be an unpleasantly idealistic goal, reeks of morality, and is preoccupied with the psychological shadow, which is normally denied whenever possible, or at least not spoken of. The task that faces our age is indeed almost insuperably difficult, it makes the highest demands on our responsibility if we are not to be guilty of another, of another, wow, this word is really, of another, what word is that? T-R-A-H-I-S-O-N? Oh, Trison tri, de Clerks. That's so supposed to be parentheses here, but it's like really bunched up. It addresses itself to those guiding and influential personalities who have the necessary intelligence to understand the situation our world is in. One might expect them to consult their consciences. C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E-S, -E -E sciences. Look up the etymology of conscience. It's interlocked with consciousness, conscious, conscience, and it's not just an accident that they sound like the same and look so similar. And they're so, both so quirky. They're both tied up with science. Conscience, consciousness, science, and sense. Science is that which is sense. Of the five senses. But since it is a matter not only of intellectual understanding, but of moral conclusions, there is unfortunately no cause for optimism. Nature, as we know, is not so lavish with her boons that she that she joins to a high intelligence the gifts of the heart also. As a rule, where one is present, the other is lacking, and where, and where one capacity is present in perfection, it is generally at the cost of all the others. The, dis, the discrepancy between intellect and feeling, or between... Jack Shepard and John Locke, man of science, man of faith. The discrepancy between intellect and feeling, which get in each other's way at the best of times, is a particularly painful chapter in the history of the human psyche. 
the psyche of Eve, of the evening, of nine. That's the psyche, Eve, the higher synthesis, the sun after a full arc from spring to over the summer summit to fall. The equinoxes of equilibrium. Eve is the psyche, Adam is the mind. I mean, the, the body. Eve is the mind, the psyche, the soul. And Adam's the soma, the body, or the mud. The mud and the apple. Both are earth, but one is a higher synthesis that you can eat in the Garden of Eaton, 18 of 369, of 6 plus 6 plus 6. Six protons, 6 electrons, and 6 neutrons of the carbon-12 atom. CRS from yesterday, which was the 5th Cinco de Mayo. <clears throat> Weird lighting today. 32.40 at 5, excuse me, at 3.59, and the invoice number was 2140, and the total ended in 40. 32.40, invoice number 2140, or 2 plus 3, 340, 340. There were 9, that's number 1. Number 2, 637, 657 total. Invoice number 5570. 5737567657. And there, look at that invoice number. 5570. Yes. Oh. Of the holes. Of the city of nine gates. Of the body. The vehicle. L. 22. 64 total at 646. 646, 2264 total. 6 and 4, 10, 1 and 0, 1, 5, 5, 7, 5. Invoice number 6 items. 646, 666. Of the hexagon, of the hexagram, aton, of the tetragram, aton. Of the mind and the body. Seven items at 7.03, and the, look at the total, 17.73. 7.03, 73. Yeah, last week a man came through and asked me if I knew about, came through the line and asked me if I knew about 73. 10.66 change, 16 items. 1066161 one and 67 7 5 plus 2 plus 9 of my birthday cashier number 16 7 16 letter name 8 plus 8 88 mercury hermes my full name is 16 letters and I was born on May 29th at 12:16 a.m. Kyle Charles Grant Add them up. 16. 18 items at 118. And look at the invoice number. 1777. And look at the total. 3332. 18 items, 118. One oh seven. Invoice number 1770. Tax 131.94 56 items Excuse me, the time was 12.56 and the number of items, 56 It's funny, this was the one I was thinking of earlier when I was telling you about the intro to the Matrix with the number 506 
our store number. The customer actually noticed that when I showed her the 56 items at 1256, she said, oh, and look, 506. And I said, yes, that's our store number. Originally the Swamp Scott location, now in Sagas. 506. 56 items at 12.56. 5 and 6 is 11. 11, 11, 11. One fifty one PM. Seven fifty one total of L.